again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I am back from a very fun, very relaxed, a little bit warmer vacation. Yes. And uh, I did remember last week when the music came on to, to talk. talk. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> um, so Florida, wide open, just so you know. Uh, they do not have any mask mandates. A um, lot of, I would say... The majority of restaurants, the staff are wearing, but that's their decision. Um, but very, very few, I don't even know if I saw a restaurant that had a sign um, saying, where, even asking you to wear a mask. And there were people everywhere and they all appeared to be alive and healthy. Um, yeah, I saw a thing this morning that said that California is actually now doing this massive push that the state is paying for to tell people they should only vacation in California. Because they're going, and they're I think going the, bankrupt. No, I think the thing, well, maybe there's an economic factor, but I actually think they're like, oh, crap, we don't want our citizens to go to other places and see that we've been... That we've been oppressing them. ...them for literally well, a I, year. Um, I listened to Dave Rubin, um, and they've got the locals, which is... Um, a competitor, I guess, to YouTube, for this lack of a better description. Um, and they're based in Silicon Valley because that's where technology-based things tend to be. Um, Locals is moving 100% from Silicon Valley to Miami. Oh, wow. And so, they, he was saying he thinks that'll be, that Miami will be the next tech hub. Well, so I was, uh, I was actually on a show last week uh, regarding crypto and sort of Bitcoin mm -hmm. and all of that. And uh, the person, Tatiana Moritz, um, you know, they are calling Miami sort yeah. of the Bitcoin capital, the yeah. crypto, crypto city, right? Yep. So I'm going to throw down because I'm like, well, New Hampshire is going to be the crypto state. If we can get the, you know, big gov al al alphabet soups to stop arresting people and to stop innovation, you know, this lawsuit with Library, which yeah. is a Manchester, New Hampshire based crypto company yes. that is very successful, that is an alternative to YouTube, um, it is decentralized, it makes things better for the entire world. It is, you know, a platform that is used by dissidents, yeah. both in America and everywhere else yeah. in the world. And, you know, these people kind of have this sense of like, oh, when this happens in Turkey, it's wrong, but no but, one's going, but when this happens here, it's also it's wrong. It's also wrong. Yeah, it'll be very, I mean, I, I have confidence that um, library is in a good position to um, survive no, I mean, it, but it's... like who, we were talking about this yesterday when we were having a brunch at your house. Um, you know, who is the victim in, who is library harming that the federal government needs to suit, go after them? Like no, well, who is the, where are the victims in these, some of these crimes? Well, well, there's that of course, you know, so there's the, the issue of sort of victimless crimes and the sort of notion that we've talked about a lot on the show where, you know, every single person pretty much commits three felonies yeah. a day. And there's there's research to prove that. There was a book written by a professor out of Massachusetts. And so like we are just over, we're just over uh, managed, we're over, yeah. you know, there are too many laws. And the point is, it, everyone's kind of like, well, it doesn't really matter because even if you're committing three felonies, what does it matter? But well, it's like, but well, it matters if they want to come for you. Right. So with the SEC, with library, you know, it's basically if they, if they get library on this, it will destroy the crypto right. market. And, and, I, and I think that's the goal. The goal isn't that there's something being done wrong. They just don't like right. the so, concept of cryptocurrencies. I mean, the, the fastest way to break it down, right, is to say that, okay, we've had innovation in a market, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way that, you know, in 1998 right. when the internet or 93, whatever the internet was right. new and everyone was like, ooh, and, you know, and people were like, wow. So it's it's kind of like that next yeah. level thing. So like it does the industrial and revolution. And they don't, people don't understand and it. And you don't Just really, like the internet. I remember no the first time I got the on the internet, I did the beep, beep, beep <laughs> thing, right? And then we sat there and we were looking at the screen and I was like, okay, so now what? And we're like, well, you can go to a website. And I'm like, but how would I know where? 
how do I know where to find them? Because there was no Google right, or anything. There was a so unless you knew a website name, which there wasn't a directory anywhere, you were like, okay, I don't under, I, I'm not understanding what right. this does. So even like thinking about the irony of that, like versus what we can now just do. Well, let me just pull that up on my phone and we're all just very comfortable I mean, with it. It's so. amazing. And honestly, I mean, I have to say, I, I, I teared up the other day because I remember when I fully understood what the internet was, right? And this notion of you have the entire wisdom and knowledge and information of the world at your fingertips. Literally. I mean, now it's literally at your fingertips. Back then it was the <laughs> dial up and it was a little hard and whatever. And so to see the level of destruction of innovation that is coming from our own government, and why would that be? It's because they're cronyists. Right. It's not capitalism, it's crapitalism. This is literally big tech companies yep. colluding with big government to go, well, these guys are sort of displacing us and we don't really understand this and we don't so really we don't like this. If we're we, big banks we and we're the Federal Reserve and we want to inflate our money. So we're just going to, I don't know, take down the competitors before they get big. They're making a mistake. I don't think you can put this genie back in the bottle. No. And so the question becomes, why disrupt innovation that is counter to the American spirit. Right. So you I'm were on your phone. <laughs> well, I was just, it made me go, I was thinking about something else and I was like, oh, if we get there, I want to have the words in front of me. I don't want to paraphrase. Um, so that's, that's, I don't even know how we got there, but and that's so, what that is. so, you know, people who are interested, who want to learn more, and I realize that a lot of people don't really understand crypto. Honestly, I don't, I don't really, really understand, understand crypto, but I'm not afraid of it. Well, but the thing is, like, there are a lot of things I don't understand. I, I don't, don't really understand, understand how my car engine works, and I'm grateful that I don't have to, I but I can tell, drive my car. I can't car. tell you how many times, like, I sit, let's look at Dan and go, I don't want to, I don't need to know this. Like, you, you understand it. I mean, I listen to him on conference calls and whatnot, and I think, I have, like, <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Right. Like, you're, and he sounds, I, he sounds intelligent. He sounds like he knows what, I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. And the person on the other side knows what he's talking about. But literally, he says, like, just words that I'm like, I don't even know. People go, what does Dan do for a living? I'm like, yeah, something on, I don't know. So just to complete that thought, okay. for people who want to understand crypto more, Basically, any kind of crypto is a hedge against the inflationary dollar. So I saw this terrifying thing yesterday. So SDRs, have you heard of this? I, th I guess it's special, uh, special money that basically... The, so there's this move to turn the financial markets into a one world government, right? So America has been inflating the dollar and we've been printing all this money and we're just magic money coming from trees. We'll just all pretend this is going to work out fine. It's free. It's, it's free. free. It's free, right? So there's that. But then there's this movement globally. So two things happened this week. One was that um, they announced, I believe it was Janet Yellen, who's the head of the Federal Reserve, announced that... Um, they're thinking about instituting a global corporate rate, which I'm like, what? How does that work? Okay, so, I mean, that's when all the countries start to glue together. And then this SDR stuff, or SRD, I'm mixing it up and I don't remember the acronym. Um, I've only read one thing about it. But it's basically the World Bank wants to now start to special issue uh, their own Currency. currencies, where basically they're like, well, why should only America be able to inflate and print money? Why don't we have a World Bank that can, that do, can it do it too? <laughs> and then we'll give each country $500 billion or something crazy, and it'll all just be great. So maybe it will be. I am in the camp. That I'm a little thinks, skeptical. Uh, hmm. You can't just keep pretending to create value well, and when why, there is I mean, And those same entities are the ones that don't want you and I to trade via... With, with okay. cryptocurrencies. And so it's like, we, we actually, I mean, isn't, the, uh, yeah, so it's very suspicious. So anyway, uh, help library, L-B-R-Y, help library save crypto is the hashtag. If you want to go do your own research back home or you want to get involved and you want to help, this is a Manchester, New Hampshire based business and uh you know we should make sure that that the sec does not destroy and where's an the governor market. how come the governor's not coming out and saying hey <laughs> governor saying. the um, governor so 
speaking of politicians and ones that don't make me insane, um, I saw this morning and I thought, you know, he's pretty gutsy. So everybody, anybody who knows me knows I worked for Senator Rand Paul when he ran for president. And um, obviously I supported his dad, you know, like he, and he is so on the money so often. Um, and he shared an article he read, I just lost it, um, that's on the, it's on the hill.com. And his comment on Facebook when he shared it was, I urge everyone to get the vaccine if you think you need or want it. And then I urge everyone in America to throw away their masks, demand their schools be open, and live your lives free of more government mandates and interference. And I thought, yep, that's kind of where it is. I actually, Dan Dan always feels bad when I won't like go into a store. I, at the beginning of this, I wouldn't go places that were requiring masks. I was like, screw that. Then you, know, then you deal with it because of whatever. And I think I'm kind of back into the screw that mo mode. I've been in the I screw know. that mode all the but, way But, you through. know, like I thought about it. I'm like, so I've spent nine days in Florida and didn't have to wear a mask. And okay, I'll wear it in the plane. I get the mentality of why in a plane, kind of. But because you're in a container. Okay, that's different. But I voluntarily chose to be there. But come on, I'm, sure. I don't know if you know I what? need to if, go. If, if they're going to force people to wear masks on planes, then why can't you force, uh, like, why do I have to sit next to a beast? people who are halfway in my seat I know Why do I, I, know, have I agree to, like um, you know like it's just once you start to meddle in it, people's it doesn't go and well. lives it doesn't go well, well because and, that slippery and we, slope and will become very we've nasty. said this a gazillion times because you know we've been saying this for over a year now but you know everybody when people throw out the word science and they say they were following science well now Dan was reading something yesterday so now the CDC's backed off and said, you know, all those hand sanitizers and the washing thing, yeah, we were wrong. That should just go I mean, away. They were actually it's, wrong about the masks, yeah, but I mean, but too. They, but now they're just like, oh, and all that, like all of you people and all you re restaurants and and uh, retailers and companies that instituted all this insane amount of hand washing and sanitizing and stuff, we were we it. it so, it was not needed. You sh we didn't need to make you spend all that money. I know that we've talked about this in the past, but it's worth repeating. So the way propaganda works is you tell a big lie. Again and again. And then again. Uh, until people are like, oh, this is what's happening. And then you can later, you can correct it with the truth, right. which the CDC is But people is still have the doing. lie in your head. But everyone, I mean, it's the same as like with 9-11. Yep. when they blamed uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, oh. right? And it was like everyone, I think the late, l last statistic I saw probably in the past two years was over 60% of Americans, or 72%, I think it was, still thought like he had something to do with 9-11. Yeah. He really didn't. You but know, there was a did. grudge match between the Bush family and those <laughs> folks, you know, whatever. But everyone will believe what you tell well, them if you make the lie big enough and believable enough. And then you can reverse later well, and be like, oh, and we even like fix going it. through the flying. Dan and I are like, and I'm laughing because it's not just me anymore. Now it's just like ha everybody's standing in line at TSA. You're like, what are we doing again? Why are we doing this? You used to have to, everybody used to have to take their shoes off. I never really understood why I needed to take my flip-flops off, how that made anybody safer, but whatever. Now I notice teenagers and children don't have to take their shoes off. So I looked at somebody next to me and I said, so if I were going to blow up a plane, why wouldn't I just put that in my kid's shoe? Like, it doesn't make any sense. They're not, and it takes forever to go through TSA. And I'm like, I don't even know what we're looking for Didn't anymore. Didn't you say also they're not checking? You it's don't random. have to take out so your electronics anymore. Depending on which lane and... you're in. If you happen to be in the lane where they want you to take out all your electronics and open them, you don't. If you happen to be in this lane, you don't have to. When we flew at Thanksgiving, Dan had to, because Dan always is in charge of the laptops and he has to take them out and put them in boxes and open them up. Okay, then... And he kept looking at me like, wait, so now we, I'm thoroughly convinced I no longer know what the TSA requirements are. And Dan had a good point. He goes, I will almost bet money that they cha that they literally change them daily so that nobody knows. Well, I don't think it's that. And uh, uh, maybe they do. But the point is it has nothing it doesn't, to do so, with security. It what it has to do with is security it's psychological. theater. Yes. So it's psychological. Um, you know, really, I indict governments at this stage because they are terrorizing their they own really citizens are. and it's wrong and it needs to stop speaking of terrorizing I was gonna say. people 
All right, I don't know if we can show this in here, but... Uh, Top of the fold, above the fold, front page story. We have Pembroke track coach fired over mask order. So this poor guy, it was very funny because you know how the world works. I saw it in the Concord Monitor early this morning. Yeah. And I shared it. I had no well, idea who it was. Read, you didn't I didn't see. I didn't read it. And then when I went out and got my paper You're an like, hour hey. later, I was like, oh, and wait, I, did I almost, actually know this guy. I did the same <laughs> thing. I had I was looking at it online. And it, you know, it kind of went by. And I go, God, that guy looks so much like Bradley Keyes. And then I started reading the article. And I'm like, oh, that's because it is Bradley Keyes. So Bradley is a... A really phenomenal, awesome human yeah, being. Not like, he's not crazy, he's not fringy, he's just um, probably a Bitcoin um, millionaire. I think he's, I'm just saying. <laughs> I wouldn't say that on the air. I have no I idea. Think, but... I think, but good for them. He's one of the people that I, I, we were joking about this yesterday, that I'll never be a Bitcoin millionaire because I spent mine at Murphy's on hamburgers because <laughs> I didn't understand the crypto thing. But I do know a lot of people who were able to like pay off their mortgages because you know of Bitcoin what? If you and more power extra to them. hundred bucks, buy, buy just buy something just, and see how. That's what we're doing now. We just because stick a honestly, bit. yeah, it doesn't like you don't have to have a whole Bitcoin. No. You can just you can really have an, a, a slice a of a bit, you know. Right. So anyway, Anyhow, so this sorry. guy Brad Keys, is a coach, track coach in Pembroke here in New Hampshire. Yep. And he was told that they have to make the kids who are running track, including long distance, wear a mask, wear a mask. And he was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I think it's irresponsible. I think it's unhealthy. I'm unwilling to do it. And if you force me to do it, you're going to have to fire me. So they did. So they did. I hope he sues I the pants off everyone. Well, I mean, and it, it, he goes on like, OK, so he was a decathlon. Um, athlete he um ran in high school he we, uh, did so also at penn state um he's been at pembroke academy this is his fourth season of uh, coaching um like he said there's kids that have asthma who run and like putting another layer on top of them is not good he says you know it's not uncommon in long distance running for runners to throw up when they stop like there's lots of things and adding forcing somebody to put fabric over their face to run outside for something that has a 99.9 for children .9 we're talking about kids. survival rate and kids don't die of this uh it, like it's just like the, it's insane the the, the, the moronic idiotic in fact he's quote at the end was yes, i his, won't do it it is idiotic it is and i've I, run all I these races you, it's sir. idiotic yeah and i what was encouraging to me um you know, I, I try to be an observer because it's easy to talk to people in your own little bubble and everybody agrees, right? Because we're all in the same bubble. Um, but I like to look at when the union leader shares an article on Facebook, I can see everybody's comments. Yep. And I, I, there was like, out of 70 comments or whatever I read this morning, there were two that were thought that he wasn't right. Yeah. Everybody was like, it's about time. Like, for well, God's sake. Well, we're also at the stage of this where suddenly everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, I was against the mass mandates. No, no, oh, yeah, I was no. against all of this. You know what? I'll take I'll it. I'll take it. But I, I'm like, <laughs> but, well, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't against it at, in April or whatever, and I tolerate it. But I'm really kind of thinking I, it's encouraging to me. I'll tell you a story after this, but it's encouraging to me to see people start to go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a. Well, this well is all at a minimum, people should have gone like, "Oh, really? It went from three feet, six feet to three feet just because." I'm like, you know, because I I I like to go to WMUR and some yeah. other sites and make some pithy comments. <laughs> so I get attacked a lot, you know. And and part of it is these people who are like, "Follow the science, trust the experts," and I'm like, the experts who literally just keep changing the science to suit whatever the government's narrative is at that particular moment. Yeah, how about I trust my own instincts? I read every source thing myself. Yep. I go to the source. I read it. I can understand it. Yes, I don't have a degree in virology. Don't think you need but, to use common sense. And I'm sense. not a doctor, but you know, I do have a law degree and I do have a master's degree in something else and I can read and I can think. Well, that's why when Rand posts thing in, the, in that article, he said, just to remind people, I went to Duke for a for medical medicine. degree. And before he became an eye doctor, he was um, an immunist. Immuni I can't. Yeah. 
the things that would <laughs> understand this. Um, it, people, so this was the the flip side of it. Yes, it's encouraging to see people starting to wake up, hopefully. But then I, so when we're on vacation, half of I think what you do on vacation is your people watch. You know, like you sit around, we sit at the at, a, at the neighborhood fish place and have a beer on the pier and you watch, you know, like people coming oh, and go, I right? I want to have a beer on right? the pier. Uh, and, um, I don't drink beer. I know. But... <laughs> you could sit there and have a seltzer on the pier and still have a good time. It doesn't rhyme. Um, the, I don't, like some of it, You, I kept looking at Dan like, that, that one doesn't make any sense. You'd see families come walking in right now. Most of this is outdoor eating, but it's not, I mean, the tables were not far apart. Like, it was normal-ish. You'd see a family walk in. Mom and dad aren't wearing masks, but they're small children. Small children. We're not even talking teenagers. You know, they're this tall children are all wearing masks. And I think, so the adult that made the decision that those kids should have masks aren't wearing masks themselves. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe no, the kid had no, the sniffles. Three kids, no, like a whole family, be, right? Okay. I mean, honestly, I, I think personally, I think making your child wear it's, a mask is child abuse. It's I mean, not when good. I see people on the trails and the, I'm just like, like, what are they? Well, that's what we were starting to like do. You outside, start, you know what yeah, I mean? Well, I saw then we're, I was up on our bel our patio balcony thing and I'm watching and it was a cooler day on the beach. So it wasn't like the beach, the beach wasn't swarmed anyways. Um, and there's three kids, and they're probably, they're either high school age or college age, I don't know, two girls and a boy. The girl, you know, they're packed up, and they're walking across the beach, and the boy's got his mask, and he keeps putting his mask on, and then he's taking it on, and he's putting his mask on, and then it's hanging on his ear, and he's putting, and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Seriously, like, what is he doing? The girls are not doing it. There are the only three people anywhere is near them, and the fact that he kept taking it off and putting it on and hanging it, I was like, oh, my God, it's an accessory. And then I saw a grown woman walk into the restaurant, and she was, you know, a little dressed nicer than you needed to be where we were, right? But you could just tell. She was like, and she had this mask hanging. Like, like, look at me. I'm kind of wearing a mask. And I thought, you're all disturbed. Yeah. They're uh, like, this is not a healthy state for people to be in because I mean, it's when, like when irrational. I saw that, 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 you know, designer. No designer. Designer people were making specific no. masks. I was no. like, ooh, you know, like Burberry or no. like whatever. And no. I was like, ooh, that's no. kind of gross. No, it's just, it, um, it, it is bizarre at best. So, so now you have a thousand dollar mask. And, right, because that makes know, you really, you're really super safe. What, the like, science why? is really important if you've got a logo. Why? Yeah. You yeah. can't get COVID with a logo. Although apparently masks will not stop you from getting COVID because yet another person in Governor Sununu's office tested positive for COVID. Now they're not really sick. They got a little bit of sore throat and they were like probably uber paranoid because they you know, work for the governor's office. But um, I uh, first thing I thought of was, but I'm sorry, aren't, uh, isn't everybody in the governor's office wearing a mask all the time? And if so, how'd yeah. that work out for you? I mean, I've never really taken that position because no, I've just always taken the position that, you know what, it's it's a virus, like other viruses. Yeah. We, we we can prove now that that's the case. The, the curves look the yeah. same over the world. They look the same depending on seasonality yeah, from yeah. North to South Hemisphere and all of that. So from the start, I was just like, there is a disease. It's going to do these things. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Yep. The only thing that changed. So, you know, wear a mask, don't wear it. It's like some people are going to get sick. Some aren't. Um, you know, the best things they could have done, of course, is to be like, how about we have the discussion about Health? how do you get healthy? Oh, no, no. Why don't we talk about this yesterday, too? Okay, so Greg Moore, who uh, runs Americans for Prosperity here in New Hampshire, posted a link um, to the New Hampshire COVID site where you can actually look at how many positive antibody tests there have been, which is like thousands and thousands. And he's like, so if you take that into fact consideration, a large portion of New Hampshire has either had... Um, ha tested positive for the virus or tested positive for the antibodies, which means we're almost, pro we could potentially almost be at that herd immunity, but why don't we offer free antibody testing? Wouldn't we want to know how many people aren't no, going to get sick? because they're like, we can't scare you anymore. Right. We can't force you to do things. We can't figure oh. out how to, you know, quickly bring in this 
one world I should have brought government. the video. Next week, I'll bring <laughs> the like video. The if you haven't thing. seen it, Google um, Chris Cuomo, CNN, um, Chinese doctor. I don't remember her name. And she, I don't know if she didn't realize she was on the air or I don't know. And she was talking on Chris Cuomo's show on CNN last week saying, you know, um, well, we have to do something because people, we have to get people to take the vaccine. And if we let them have freedoms, they're not gonna take the vaccine. So we need to pull back on their freedoms so that they we can give them back to them in lieu, in trade for the vaccine. And I'll, I, you know, boom, my head explode. Cause like, sweetie, that's not how freedoms work. You don't get to <laughs> hand them out to me. You don't have a secret pocket of freedoms that you get to decide who gets to have and who doesn't. So I was like, good God, people just stop. Like. <laughs> If, if there was ever a case to be made for, like, you all need to go to California and live there. You can have the warm California beaches. You know, and, and I'll give honestly, them up. let's, you know, let's do that. So I'm like, look, if you aren't into freedom, there are 49 other, other states. states. Get out of you, New like, Hampshire. start moving there so that we can have one place. Where we're where, not crazy. Where it's truly live <laughs> free or die. Where it is live free and thrive. Yep. And we just actually enjoy the uniqueness of individualism and we we prosper because we actually support human flourishing through supporting yep. human liberty yeah 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 um house <laughs> what session, else we there's got? house session yep. this week three days are scheduled wednesday to today's tuesday so tomorrow wednesday thursday and friday at the bedford sportsplex which has like way more space than any place else that they've had short of being outdoors. Um, there's still um, seven state rep, Democrat state reps who are still pursuing um, for having the court force the, the legislature to let them meet remotely, even though, I don't know. I mean, if you can't if you, serve because of health reasons, then maybe you should every, step away and let the new guard yep. and the people with the right ideas and the people who haven't gotten us into this mess, why don't you guys yep. step aside and let people Well, I mean, every one lead. of these people that's in this lawsuit and the courts are even like, you want us to have a decision by Wednesday? They're like, what? And they were like, well, no, that's not, that's op that would be optimal, but we don't expect that. Um, but they're all like 60 and older and make, begs me to ask like, so why aren't you just vaccinated? That was, I mean, 60 was weeks and weeks ago that those people could get vaccinated. So yeah. I don't really understand. I'm not following their science. No, just I just don't follow the logic of don't. 2020 into no. 2021, no. but maybe that's uh, So me. it's not so bad out. It's pretty warm. It's going to be in this, up near 60 every day this week. Get out. I didn't it, even bring a coat today. I, this was it. I had to put a little <laughs> bit on. Um, but get out there. Enjoy the outdoors. Rake your yard. Do a little exercise, take a walk. Spring's coming. We need to make sure that, you know, we get healthier. Yep. So check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, available on Amazon and CarlaGarrick.com. That's it. That's it. We'll be back next week. Take care. Bye.